Hi, welcome. In this video, I'm going to go through problem 23. Um, problem 23 says, if p of t is the size of a population at time t, which of the following differential equations describes linear growth in the size of the population? Okay, so p of t is the size of a population at time t. And what we want is a differential equation, one of the answer choices, that describes linear growth, pay attention, and the size of the population. So the size of the population was p of t, so whichever um, differential equation is correct uh, must have um, an original equation p of t that resembles a linear growth, and that would be of some kind like mt plus b, where you know we're likening it to mx plus b, because if um, p of t, which is the size of the population at time t, uh, could be modeled in the form mt plus b for some constants m and b, um, then it's clear that it represents linear growth. Um, okay, but this equation is not a differential equation. This is just an equation that says what the general form of p of t is. To turn it into a differential equation, we must take the derivative of both sides. So dp dt, when we take the derivative, is going to equal simply m. This is a constant, so it goes to zero. And then the derivative of mt, where m is a constant and t is a variable, um, should just be m. And notice that uh, p of t, the um, size of the population at time t, depends on t, not on any other variable. So this was correct for us to claim that the variable is t there. So here, so we must have a differential equation that says uh, dp dt is equal to a constant. And there's only one answer choice that says that, and that's A, the correct answer choice. Um, so this is one very efficient way to solve this problem. Uh, another is to actually go through the differential equations, which are the answer choices, and solve for p of t, and show that p of t is, um, a lin a a does a good job describing linear growth. Well, if we did that with b, just so that you see some examples, then um, solving dp dt equals 200t uh, could be done using separation of variables, where we get dp is equal to 200t dt. Now we integrate both sides, and we're going to get uh, p of t on the left side plus some constant. And then uh, on the right side, we're going to get 200t squared over 2 plus another constant. And of course, we could say that p of t is equal to 100 t squared plus k, where we combine the two constants, um, c2 and c1 is k, where we claim that k is equal to c2 minus c1. This is unnecessary detail, but you get it. Now, this is not obviously not linear growth. It's quadratic growth. So this is why like answer choice um, B wouldn't work. And you get it, like you could go through the rest. Like D is kind of unique, and that D would represent exponential growth. Um, but then you could look at E and C and gather, once you uh, get a sense of what, how B and D behave, um, how C and E ought to behave. Like you could, you could infer that based on uh, how B and D behave, but you get it. Like the only answer choice is clearly A. And, um, uh, that makes sense for linear growth. Okay, so take care.